it is so beautiful. Like, so beautiful. I love this book so much, but yeah. This Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly vlog. Actually starting on a Monday. Go us, that's taken a little while but we've got there. And I'm just going to quickly whiz through my reading plans for this week because I have work and I need to start getting ready because I've only got 20 minutes. So this is going to be really quick. The book I'm planning to read at work because I'm on mid shifts so it means a lot of travelling to and from like different stations and things um, is going to be Babel. I'm actually reading this as an audiobook which isn't something I do very often but I really fancied an audiobook for this week at work just to listen to while I am traveling around and I feel like this is going to be really interesting so this is Babel by RF Kwan. This book is a dark academia book it's looking at how a country when they're taken over assimilates a language and the translations of it how it can really remove some of the finer points of that language that they are taking over. So I think it's more to do with colonisation stuff. I don't know fully because I, I haven't read this book, obviously. Um, I'm really just going off of vague things of what I remember with other people talking about this book. I've really been in two minds whether I wanted to pick it up though and so I decided that audiobook might be a really good way to do this and if I do like it I know that I will physically reread this book and so I know I will pick it up. I, I just I haven't been sure because I did not get on with Poppy War by RF Kwan and I don't know whether it's her writing style or whether it was just that fantasy book because she is writing very different books each time but I just want to see whether it's it's her writing style I don't get on with or whether it was just that fantasy series The Poppy Wall because I, I didn't get on with that. But physically I also like to bring a physical book with me and I'm going with The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. I'm very excited, I'm definitely going to try and solve this alongside it. I don't think I'm going to do a separate video for it this time but I will be giving you updates on how I'm getting on with it. It's only a very short one so I imagine I'm going to get that done quite quickly. Then for at home I really really want to read God Killer by Hannah Kenner and this is the book that you all chose for me to read for the month and I'm really pleased you did because I've been so excited. This is a fantasy standalone, very short and this is about a person that goes around killing gods until she comes across one she can't kill. I'm really excited, I've heard nothing but good things and this cover is stunning. So those are the physical books, then we have the audiobook as well. So that's the plan. However, last week at work, a colleague did give me two Stephen King books. So he decided to give me two short Stephen Kings, because I said I'm very intimidated by Stephen King, because some of those books are massive. And he said, well, give them a try. So we have the very first book that he published, which is Carrie. I don't know what this one's about. And then the other one, which is apparently the start to his fantasy series. He said the first book isn't amazing, but it does get better. This lighting has just gone, I'm sorry. Um, and that's The Gungslinger, which is the first book in the Dark Tower series. He says it is a bit of a slog, but it does get better. So we're gonna see. I may pick up one of these as well, depending on how quickly I finish The Body in the Library. If I have something to read for the end of the week, I might pick up one of these. We'll see. But it was very kindly gifted to me, says he has multiple copies because he picks up all of his books thrifted. So that was really nice to start and I can see if I do like Stephen King's writing or not. That's it! That was pretty good. We're under five minutes at the minute. I think that was an amazing intro, although I hope you're doing amazingly well. Let me know what you've been up to, what you've been reading, if you've read any of the books that I'm reading, what your thoughts are on Babel. I know a couple of you have read Babel, you've mentioned that in the Discord channel that I have, I will try and remember to actually link that below. Um, and so that's been really interesting, so I'm really excited to see what I think, but do let me know if you've read any of these books, what you've been up to, how are you all doing and feeling, but I really do have to get ready for work, so I'm gonna rush off and do that, and I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow with initial thoughts on things that I have read. Thank you so much for joining, and I will catch you for you in about 30 seconds for me tomorrow.
morning. I made quite good reading progress yesterday. Let me actually just pop you down. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, so reading progress yesterday. As we know, I was listening to an audiobook which was Babel. I have got to chapter 8 of 40. It says I've got 17 hours 59 minutes left in the audiobook. Um, I am just listening to it on normal speed. I know some people like speed it up and stuff. I can't, I can't do that. I have notes because this is definitely a book if I was reading it physically, I mentioned this on my Discord, that I would have to do this really slow. So I'm quite pleased I'm listening to it first to get an understanding of the basis of the book. And it feels more like a podcast it being spoken to, like a non-fiction book it almost feels like at this point. So first of all, it does focus on language, the importance of it, and how blasé people can be about the importance of a language, and the fact that things do get lost in translation. You can't translate anything perfectly because unfortunately some words just don't translate into the language that you're trying to get it into, and how some people just see it as so like I said blase about being able to know lots of different languages and stuff because even say like for myself I'm I speak English it's my it's my first language I'm terrible at learning other languages and I do kind of take for granted the fact that when I go on holiday generally they speak English and it is something that I do take for granted it's not something I've ever really spoke thought about this book makes you think and makes you realize how wrong it is to take that for granted the fact that these other countries have had to learn english as a second language and we don't take the time to return the favor and, and i do this book makes you question a lot of different things so that's like the big point in this book and also names it said about how names how unfair it was that people that were taken from other countries then have to have like an english name because people can't pronounce their name and so again it's done for the convenience of others rather than the respect that you have for that person's name so this book really does make you think and i like it for that but it also means that if i was reading it physically i would find it really slow and quite dense in places but i like the way it's done we've got two different narrators one for the footnotes and then one for the actual story and i think that works really well um there's also a lot of talk on how other races are perceived in this so it's set i think it was like was it 17 i can't remember fully the date that was given but it's set in the past where britain was colonizing a lot of places and it talks about the assumptions that people have for different races so uh, one that is commonly spoken about in this book is the fact that chinese are seen as slothful and liars and thieves and it's just those preconceptions that was had back then about the way these people were like i just and it, again it's wrong this book feels so angry to read it's really much like rf Khan's taken this book to be angry at all of this to be angry at how people are so ignorant of things and it's really taken the time to explain it but you can feel the anger and the passion behind it all and i just i just think it was really it's really good for that um, so this does make me want to actually pick up this book and annotate it, but it's something I would have to do slowly. We also have a very small talk about women's rights, because this is like the suffragette movement, um, but that's not the focus of this book. So it's mentioned, but the focus of the book is all about languages, how different um, races are perceived, and like losing your identity to fit the mould and... I, I just find it really good. It's really important read. It's definitely making me question a lot of things that I take for granted. I think it's good. It's good when a book can get you to question things like that and make you realise, look, maybe you shouldn't just accept this. Maybe you should question things. And I like it for that. So it's definitely something that I'm really enjoying. I'm glad I'm listening to it though. Um, I know that there are some things that I'm missing with an audiobook because when you're busy doing stuff I don't always pay attention to what I'm listening to but this is a great way for me to get a base understanding of this book and then when I get a copy and I physically annotate it and stuff I will have a much better understanding to go from this book so I'll of course be carrying on with that today I didn't read any of God Killer unfortunately I got a bit too busy in the evening but I have made some progress with the body in the library I've got two because I forgot a bookmark, so I've had to dog ear a page, but I don't mind it so much for these ones. Uh, chapter 7, page 77. 
and I'm enjoying this. It's really good. I have my little thought in my journal. I love trying to solve mysteries. I really do. So, so far it's just two very messy pages. I need to know this up as I get further in. But I'm going to give a more of a spoiler-free overview so that you don't, like if you haven't read this book and you want to, you're not going to get spoiled because I'm not doing a separate vlog video. If I was doing a separate vlog for this then I would be spoilers but for now we're just going to stick to non-spoilers. So basically the person has turned up dead in a library and they're all very excited about this and there's a couple of comments which made me laugh out loud on this because Mrs Bantry calls up Jane Marple going oh my god there's a body in the library isn't it fantastic do you want to come over and help solve it and it's just hilarious and Miss Marple's like well okay dear if you want me there and it's just it's just funny there's just some funny moments in this because Mrs Bantry's like oh it is sad and I know I should be sad about it but isn't it great that we get to do this again and it's just like it's hilarious it's funny um and we are just slowly going through our list of suspects of what's happening we're getting the bare bones of the timing of it all and we're starting to put things in basically what's happened is this woman she's a dancer she has turned up dead in the library and she's been strangled and we have a few people of interest or one of them is somebody that knows her and just every time she's mentioned gets really angry and I feel like she's probably the highest on my suspect list again keeping it all vague um, and then we have some other people two other people which are suspects but to me I don't think they are I think they're just going to profit from what's happened um, because there was a comment where they said well that solves that problem so it doesn't seem like they've had a hand in it but definitely we're just like well we're going to benefit from this so we're not mad about it and we were definitely having to think about how we get around this situation but I don't think they've actually had a hand in this so at the minute there's not a lot to go on which is fine because it's only been six chapters um but what we do know is that the person that's died was going to come into a lot of money which then is always a big factor let's face it money is always a big reason but i think there's going to be more to it than that it's it's never as straightforward as what you think from my reckonings of like one book but I failed at solving that one. It would be really interesting to see where I can solve this one. So far, the main person that I'm thinking of is the person that gets angry every single time the person that died is mentioned. And that's it. That's that's my thoughts on that. And that's I'm going to keep it low-key like that. I honestly think I'm not going to be able to solve this because I didn't solve the first one and I was just so completely wrong. It was actually unreal. I did really enjoy making that video though. So if you're interested, I'll have it linked below. But I do think that I am not going to be able to solve this but you never know anyway right I've done enough chatting I need to get ready for work and get going I need to go I've got 10 minutes I I've got to go quite a bit of a reading update to do actually so Babel we are up to well I say we I am up to chapter 14 um, and I've got about 13 hours 49 minutes left of the audiobook to go I, I like it but everything that I said when I first initially read to you how many hours I'd got through it's exactly the same now 
it feels very drawn out, very slow. There's not a lot happening. We are dealing with Robin, our main character, who is very much questioning what he's doing at Babel and the fact that what he's doing allows him to have a roof over his head, food in his stomach, money, like he's able to have all of that. And if that was to go away, he is left with nothing. However, what he's doing, he knows is fundamentally wrong. He's helping to empower an already very corrupt state. He's helping to empower being able to take control away from people and losing other nation's sense of self by constantly converting everything into English and choosing how that is translated, choosing how knowledge gets shared, which obviously knowledge is power, and also the wealth distribution of it all, how that these silver bars, which is part of their magic, is to do all to do with translation, that when you translate you lose an essence of what that is and that essence they can turn into magic or generated through these silver bars and how these silver bars are amazing they can heal and things like this but they're not used for the good of the country they are used to make the rich richer and robin is helping this happen but at the same time he's loving what he's learning he doesn't want to lose where he is but you can see things are just starting to crack where he's leading this kind of almost double life. Not sure where he belongs in terms of wanting to be a part of Babel and everything that's going on but also finding it so fundamentally wrong and wanting to do something about that. So it's very interesting and I like it but it is very repetitive and quite long-winded. That could just be because I'm listening to it as an audiobook and I'm not physically reading it, but I am finding it a bit slow. There's not a lot that's happening and I understand it because he's dealing with an internal debate, which with himself is understandable and it is a very difficult position to be in because, I mean, it is. If you're benefiting from helping something that is so morally wrong, but at the same time, if you then don't help with that, you're left with nothing. Like, it's a hard thing to do because you don't have a safety net behind you and stuff. So I understand it, but it does make this quite slow. Um, and so that's kind of how I'm feeling. So I feel like there's nothing new for me to add into what's happening because as much as I've had more of an understanding of the magic and stuff, it does feel like everything is repeated. What it's doing and what it's trying to say is so important and I love it for that but I'm not gelling with the delivery of it and the plot line and pacing of it all. So we're gonna see how it ends because it could go really well. I mean, I'm not even halfway through from the looks of things, so it will be interesting to see how it goes, but I am finding it a bit, bit boring at this point. Anyway, that's that one. Then I have almost finished The Body in the Library. I've got the last 50 pages to go and you know what, again with this one, I'm not actually loving it. Like, it's okay, but I'm not enjoying it as much as I did the first Agatha Christie book I read. And this one, I don't, I'm just not getting the same feel, the same excitement. And it's, it's just, it's not hitting there, which is a shame. And um, because it's like, I'm not, not wanting to pick it up, but I'm also really happy to leave it at just 50 pages a day and not read more than that. So yeah, I don't know. Although, I have made more movements with what's happening in terms of who I think it is. So I have neatened up my notes. So we have the timeline and we have the persons of interest. Now, obviously I'm not gonna say exactly who I think it is, but I have three top suspects, although one of them is really low down. And all I'm gonna say is that he is a bumbling idiot and that could either be an act or a genuine thing. And if it's the act, then we'll see. But I don't think so. He's the, he's the lowest on the list. Instead, I have two other people that aren't really mentioned that much in the book. And I feel like it could be them. One of them because he's trying to get into the family of the Jeffersons who would benefit from the lady dying because she was going to be taken away £50,000. So for because she's died, that's now not going to happen. So then the next in line will get the money. And I feel like there's one guy that wants to get in on that action. So I feel like it could be him because of all of that and it's a bit sinister, but we haven't really spoken to him and we haven't really had any interaction. Again, this is all really vague, I know, I'm sorry, but 
spoilers you know and then one other person it could be again we've not had much interaction he's been there he's been mentioned but no one's really thought of him and i feel like either the bumbling idiot is going to be the one and it's the most obvious and so i don't like it and i feel like that would be really boring or it's going to be one of the two people that we really haven't spoken too much. And that's all I'm going to give you because in case you want to read it. And I will just let you know if I'm right or not. We're in the last 50 pages so we're going to see. But I haven't really been as like, oh my god it could be this person and like coming out with loads of theories. Because I just don't feel as like gripped by this one. So I'm also really pleased that I didn't do a separate video for that because I'm just not feeling it. You would have seen that I started God Killer. I haven't got far into this at all. Um, I've read up to chapter 4, page 38, and we're having quite a mix of point of views, which I was really surprised at. I didn't expect that. So we're following Kissen, and Kissen is the god killer going around killing all the gods. In this world, there are loads and loads of gods. They're really easy to be created. However, they're now being done as like no they're dangerous and so god killers are allowed um, and so she goes around killing them because her family was killed by some fire god worshippers which isn't a spoiler because that is on the synopsis but we also get a few other perspectives so we're following this young girl and she is bound to a god and so she can't kill this god because their lives are interwoven together and they don't know why um, and so you get her perspective which is really interesting we also get a perspective of what was his name elo elo is someone that was the king's former best friend um, however, because of this whole business with the god killing, they are no longer as close as they were. They're a bit estranged. However, the king has gone to him saying, I need your help. We need to go to this past thing. And this past thing has something to do with a war. Um, and so we're getting that. And it looks like the next perspective is actually going to be the god that is linked with this young girl. Um, although this god's really cute. Like, it's like really cute little animal thing and it can like change size and stuff. And it's just, it sounds really cute. Um, so I was quite surprised at the mixture of perspectives that we're getting. But I've only had one perspective of each. So I actually can't give you much more than what the synopsis was that we have god killers. And there is this god that is tied to a little girl called Inara and kiss and can't kill it. And somehow along the way, we're going to have the king's former friend. I think they still try and be friends, but they're not as close as they were because of what's happened in the past. And he was a soldier from the looks of it. And they're all going to come together and save the world at some point because there's a lot of stuff going on. I like it though. I think the writing's really good. I'm really enjoying it. However, I'm really in the mood for a classic book and I think because I've got an audiobook which is okay but I'm not really into the mystery book which I'm, again, not fully gripped by. It's just been feeling like a bit of a lacklustre reading week. However, I have high hopes for this book and I will be reading more of it this evening because this is my at-home book. So I'm really hoping to get more of this read. I didn't read any yesterday because yesterday I had work and then straight to a date night with my partner which was lovely. We had some lovely food. Um, and we're going back out today so I just hang home quickly to eat, get changed and update you. But yeah, so that's the plan to read that. However, I have also been book shopping because of course I've been book shopping. I had some points to use up at a independent bookstore near my work. So I decided to use those points on two books. So technically I didn't pay for these, which is good. So I am continuing on still with Miss Marple. So this one is The Moving Finger. This will be the one to read after The Body in the Library. So I had to get that because I don't own that. And obviously I want to continue Murder Mystery. We know what that is. And then, okay. So this is where I'm feeling like I've gone crazy, but I'm really in a classics mood. And I've decided that this year is the year to tackle War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy and look at the size of that that is 1200 pages people i don't know what's overcome i just don't know it's just it's happening okay and we can also blame throne of pages for influencing me to pick up war and peace as well as emmy i'll have her channel linked below and do you know who else has got me wanting to really get back into my classics katie so I'm going to have all three of their channels linked below, all amazing channels, absolutely love them, but all three of them are to blame for me wanting to get back into classics and feeling brave enough to tackle this. Like, oh my god. But I really am, I really am in the mood for a classic book right now, so as much as I think Godkiller is going to be amazing, it is a fantasy book and it's not quite what I'm in the mood for. 
That being said, I also picked up a book from a charity shop yesterday. It's another classic because like I said, I'm on, I'm on the classic kick. I want that. And I got this one, which is A Handful of Dust by Evelyn Wu. And this one is not one I've heard anyone talking about, but it is in the Longfleet English Library classic edition, which I love to collect. So I saw it and decided to pick it up. It was £2.49. And apparently this is bitterly funny novel of betrayal and selfishness combines with comedy and savage satire, which sounds great. And I was really tempted just to pick this one up and start reading it straight away, but obviously busy. Anyway, I've got a train to catch. That's all the updates done. A bit chaotic, I feel like. And I feel like this reading week's not going as well as I wanted it to, but fingers crossed, we're gonna read some more of God Killer. We're going to finish up the Miss Marple book and then from there we'll see. Probably end up picking up a classic because I'm really feeling it right now. But okay, I have five minutes. I need to catch this train and I still need to finish packing. So wish me luck and I will catch up with you very soon. morning the lighting is not amazing but i feel like yesterday's update just was a bit lackluster and it's a shame because i am really enjoying one of the books that i'm reading and i think it was just the disappointment that i'm kind of feeling with the body in the library like it's not bad but it's just not as engaging as i thought it was gonna be and babel i read probably an extra well listened to an extra hour or so and i do like it it just does feel very slow and I'm glad that this is, I mean, I've said this already, but that I'm listening to it for a first read because I know that physically reading it, I would find really dense. So I think it's more just that it's very slow paced and there is so much being put to you that it does feel like a history textbook at times. But there is one book that I am really enjoying and that is God Killer. Beautiful cover, by the way, but obviously don't read with a dust jacket on. Anyway. There was quite a bit that I had just forgotten to mention yesterday and I did also read quite a bit more. So I'm now up to chapter 15, page 126. But the few things that I wanted to talk about first, which I just didn't mention, but was in the first few chapters that I'd read, was the representation in this book is absolutely amazing. It's so good. And not just representation between different relationships, whether they be sapphic, bisexual, or friendships, or, you know, beautiful, every sort of, like, depiction of love is in this book. And, and I love that. I love how that is portrayed in this book. And it's so natural and so seamless. And I just absolutely love it sometimes you can get a book where it feels like it's just doing it for brownie points to have in like a side character that's bisexual or something it doesn't actually feel natural to the book whereas this is so natural and I love the way that's all been ingrained in this book not just that we also get a lot of disability representation so kissing one of our main characters she actually has a prosthetic leg and I think it's done so well the depictions of the phantom pain that you get with that the discomfort of wearing the prosthetic and the difficulties that she has with that the fact that she does have a wheelchair for when it gets a bit too much and I love it I absolutely love it we have another character that's in a wheelchair we have a character that's deaf we have a character that's dealing with PTSD which is Elogost or I think I said Elo but I think it's Elo and he is dealing with some leftover trauma from this war that he was a part of like he has tremors in his hands and stuff which he's constantly trying to hide it just does such a good job of representation and i love how the key note with all of that is that yes we've got these like in kisson's case a prosthetic leg and she sometimes needs to use a wheelchair 
but she doesn't let that stop her she's still a god killer like she is still badass and kicking out for it and it's just so good and one of the other characters she says to Inra who is the young girl and says to her people don't suspect us of being strong or something like that hang on let me get it up for you because it was a really nice quote we're always stronger than people think and I just think that was so lovely so for all of that I am loving it. Then we have the themes of this book and there is a theme of loss throughout this book and it's explored in different ways which I really appreciate as well but also the theme of belief. So belief is a massive part of this because there are loads of gods and gods are created through people's belief. The more they believe something the more they like hope for it and pray and even their fears it then creates a god and the problem is in this world the gods have gotten to the point where they've got so powerful that they have now wrecking humans lives through wanting sacrifices and causing horrible things to happen until they get those blood sacrifices and it's a really interesting thing which is why gods are now seen as dangerous and we're allowed to kill them so it's it's really interesting I love it like that and I think the whole aspect of belief and where that all comes from and it's just really good and I definitely think thinking about it and talking about it I should be tabbing that because I think it's amazing however I never know whether to do something like that on a second read because I'm still new to this whole tabbing thing so it's I'm enjoying it but tabs I do have tabs going on in this book and I did actually have two from the first little section that I read so I'm going to talk about those two first so we have I'm just going to show you one here it's easier this sort of greeny color it looks more brown in here um but that is for quotes that I really like the usual quotes I really like that doesn't quite fit into the other tabs that I'm doing so that was the first one and then the second colour that I did is this purple and that is for all the moments of loss, grief, sadness, that is that colour and then I added in a couple of extra colours so the next one I added in was blue and this is for hopeful moments so anything like that sentence that I said about being stronger than what people think I just feel like that's so hopeful so positive so that is the blue because as much as I did love it I also think it just had more to it than that and I wanted to tab those hopeful positive moments and then finally we're using this sort of brownie orange and that is for a romance that's blossoming and I think it's lovely and really cute and there's lots of little banter and stuff so that's that. So that's my tabbing system. I do feel like I should do another colour for the belief system in this but as you can see I have used quite a lot of this so I don't know whether I'll just grab another tab. I definitely need to order more because I ordered those as a, oh, maybe I'll do this, and I've been loving tabbing. So I do feel like I could easily go back through the book and add those tabs in. We'll see. I am loving this book. So this is the book that I'm reading at home of an evening. And even last night, I was so prepared to stay up so late and read more of this book because I was just so into it. I just, I'm really, really loving this book. So yeah definitely going to continue on with this tonight and probably Saturday and finish it up over the weekend because it's just so good plus it is so beautiful like so beautiful I love this book so much but yeah this is really good and as much as I said yesterday like I was really in a classics mood and I am because I was quite tired come the evening time this is the perfect book to settle down to especially because there's actually some cozy fantasy vibes to this not exactly because this definitely got a lot more high stakes than the usual cozy fantasy cozy fantasy tends to have really low stakes this has high stakes in it like there's a lot going on but there are some cozy fantasy moments in here mainly because elagust is a baker and those moments of just baking bread and just that it just ah oh, i love that uh, maybe it's just me but like everything that's like bakery related i just find cozy but yeah that that's that book absolutely loving it and then yesterday I did get my locked library subscription box come through and so this is the March book and I did a full unboxing on my TikTok so if you want to follow me over there it's always linked below but this is the book and it's absolutely stunning I haven't heard of this book which again is why I wanted this book box because it's all books that I've not heard of um, but if the thorns remains anything to go by I really enjoyed that and that was last month's pick 
so this one it's the valkyrie this is by katie hartfield and it looks absolutely stunning we have it absolutely gorgeous all the way around these beautiful stenciled edges please focus on the edges and not my face but yeah absolutely stunning and then under the dust jacket this time it's just some beautiful purple edges by the way edges and papers and then under the dust jacket we have this which is absolutely stunning i think it's gorgeous i really really do love this oh and in each book you also get a letter from the author which i really like so this is stunning i'm so impressed with it i wonder if there's a map because it's a fantasy book so is there a map no no map but this author has done two other books which i really like that actually because then if i like this i can get the other books and on the back it says it was a place for believing in gods and monsters but what made me shiver was that everyone was a god and a monster love it absolutely love it i think it's gonna be a really good read it's not long and i'm i'm just excited i think it's another standalone as well so yeah this is this is good but yeah this is a bit more of a positive <laughs> update rather than yesterday although yesterday i did go out to it's called a twist museum which is like an optical illusion museum and it was a lot of fun so i went there with my partner yesterday and that was really good that's it we're done i am gonna have to get ready for work i've got about 10 minutes before i need to leave which is nothing new but yeah i'm very very pleased with this new book and with the book that i'm currently reading i will finish the body in the library today and yeah that that would just be done um i think it's just oh, it's just a bit of a shame but we'll see how it ends anyway right i'm rambling i've got to go so i will catch up with you I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, whether it might just be Sunday, because tomorrow I am busy. Me and my sister, we're going out shopping tomorrow, and we haven't done this in years, so I don't think I'm going to be updating tomorrow, because she's meeting all so much earlier than I thought, so much earlier. She wants to do a full day from, like, 9am to, like, 8pm shopping, and I don't know if I've got that in me, guys. I just, I don't know. It's going to be a hard one. So I don't know if I'm going to update tomorrow. I might just update Sunday. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, right, okay, I've got to go. Good morning. It is Sunday and I have reading updates. So I finished Miss Marple. Um, I keep saying Miss Marple. It's the body in the library the, from the Miss Marple series. And uh, yeah, I was wrong we're not surprised right we're not surprised i am always wrong with these books <laughs> like i was so wrong and again it was somebody that i considered at the start and then dismissed so you know next time i think i'm just gonna stick with my guns and stick with who i think it is from the beginning because that seems to be the case so that i was completely wrong but i did like it towards the end as i say i don't think it was my favorite i definitely preferred murder in the vicarage but it was still an enjoyable entertaining time it just wasn't as high up there as i'd hoped and then i have finished god killer although i've left the dust jacket on never mind i've literally only finished this about 10 minutes ago and i did really like it although it's left in a way where i definitely think there should be more to this like i do think this is a start of a series and i definitely hope so because there is so much left that can have another book whether it is going to be a series i'm not sure whether it'd be a duology or a much larger series i don't know i feel like the world is so interesting the belief and faith system the way they create the gods i think there's so much that can be explored with this book and i did very much enjoy it and enjoyed my time annotating and tabbing the book it was just it was really good i really enjoyed it really engaging very easy to read there is a lot happening in this book but at the same time none of it felt too rushed considering it is such a short fantasy book i actually think this was a really nice like introduction book if you're maybe transitioning from ya to adult i'm not quite sure what age range this book is in but i feel like it's actually a really nice one to transition between the two um it's not 
that complicated but it's got bigger themes that it looks into so that's what I think. In the end I didn't go with the annotating the belief system or the look at faith in this. I definitely think I will upon reread but for this first time I decided to stick with the original tabs that I've told you about but it was it was good. It was really enjoyable. And then I did get to chapter 24 in the audiobook. It says I've got about 7 hours and 48 minutes left of Babel and I'm just going to carry on listening to this as and when. I didn't really feel like rush finishing it in across the weekend. One, I was mega busy. Yesterday I went shopping with my sister and we were out for 11 hours pretty much dead on and it was it was great and I loved it but oh my gosh, was it busy. I didn't even go into a bookshop, like what? But it was great, it was a really good time, but it did mean that I read nothing yesterday and didn't listen to anything because I was spending the whole time with my sister. So yeah, that didn't happen, but that's fine. I don't mind that. I am enjoying this audiobook more now. I feel like there was a little lull where there was a lot more of Robin just being stuck between decisions. But now in this later bit, we've had Robin that has gone back to Canton and now he's back in Oxford. And there's been a series of events that's happened and I've really enjoyed that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the fallout's gonna go. It seemed to be just that middle bit for me of what I've read. So just after the first day, so about five hours into the book that I then noticed that it was a bit slow for a few hours and then the rest of it's picked right back up again and my enjoyment level's really there for it. So I do think I would pick this book up physically. Not for a little while because I probably wouldn't read it physically for a little while. I am enjoying it and it is one that I will pick up eventually. So yeah, that's it. That's the reading week. And I would do a recap of everything we've read this week, but I literally just did it because it's only been these three things. So the murder mystery, body in the library and the fantasy book, God Killer, the two physical books, and then an audio book. That's been this weekly's reading vlog. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these. Oh, I know a lot of you were wanting to know my thoughts on God Killer as to whether you would then pick it up. So let me know if you will now. I do think it's done really well. I think the characters are great. I love the character work and the dynamic between them all I think was really good. So I do highly recommend. So you have to let me know if I've convinced you. But that is it. So thank you so much for watching. I think if we've made it this far, then let's leave a leaf emoji because the dust jacket of God Killer is autumn in all its glory. Like that's what it reminds me of. So put an autumn leaf in the comments below, but that's it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do remember to give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things are really helpful to helping this channel grow. And my social media links will be linked below. Anyone I've mentioned, always linked. And that's it. So I'll of course catch you in the next one.